Hello everyone and welcome to another video. If you're like me and you struggled last year in fantasy and you have a high pick or the number one overall pick, this video is for you. These are the best available players that could be selected number one overall. And if you're number one overall or you have a high pick, these are the people that I rank from who you should definitely draft to maybe there's a little questions on them. Still great selections, but if you want the number one overall pick or top three pick, you probably want someone who's really gonna take you home. And if you look at the fantasy rankings, these are the top 10 players to select in your fantasy football leagues. For more fantasy content like this, make sure to like this video. So you have from draft first all the way to, you know something that I don't. So let's begin. We're gonna start off with, I'm gonna start from this order. I'm gonna start from Jonathan Taylor and I'm gonna move all the way to Christian McCaffrey. I'm gonna say risky. Jonathan Taylor is a risky number one overall or a top two, top three pick. Anthony Richardson is coming back. And Jonathan Taylor had a pretty good season and he doesn't have any backup running backs like Zach Moss last year to take his touches away. So I think he'll be pretty good. I'm just saying if you want him number one, number two, number three, that's a pretty risky thing. I mean, like he'll get a good amount of touches, but that that is, like I said, it's pretty risky. Jamar Chase as a top option. I think that's also... I'm saying that's not a bad option. I'm saying that's a good option. If it's a top one, two, or three, that's still a little risky. Maybe I should put that at risky. But Joe Burrow, I think the only risky aspect of Jamar Chase, I'll put that at risky. The only risky aspect of Jamar Chase is Joe Burrow could potentially be hurt because, you know, a lot of people tell me he's injury prone. He's coming off an injury. So, you know, that could be risky having him as a top three pick. But I do believe that Jamar Chase is a baller. I do believe Jamar Chase with Joe Burrow should definitely be someone right here. But it's more dependent like on his quarterback. Like with the receivers, it's just dependent on their quarterback a lot of times, which leads me to Justin Jefferson, who I think is also risky as a number one overall. I don't think he should be number one overall. Like last year, definitely number one overall, right? Last year, last two years, number one overall, definitely. I wouldn't say this year that's risky because I don't know who's throwing him the ball. Sam Darnold, JJ McCarthy, I don't know who it is, but they not Kirk Cousins. And that drop off at quarterback. And then also you got Jordan Addison, who's pretty capable as well. Justin Jefferson is still going to get his touches. Justin Jefferson will still get good yards. It's just if the quarterback play suffers, then, you know, there's there's better options I feel available than Justin Jefferson. So I'm going to put that at risky. Y'all might say that's freaking dumb. I just think his quarterback is not the one to get it to him. Um, Amon Ross St. Brown, I think he's he's a really good receiver. He's dope. And if you get him on your team, he's going to be really good. But if you want, if you get a top three player on your team, you need a guy, you know, you need a guy that's like going to carry you. Like Amon Ross St. Brown's going to put up really good numbers for you. But when you're picking high, you want a guy who's going to be like, okay, I'm down 25 points, 30 points. I need him. And he's not going to do that. He may do that, but that's not like, I'm not banking my money on it. So I'm, I'm going to definitely put him at, you know, something that I don't know. Bijan Robinson, I'm very high on. I'm putting him at good option. I think Bijan Robinson with a more capable coach who actually wants to give his players touches and his best players touches at that. I think Bijan Robinson is very is due for a big season. I think he's gonna have a wonderful year. Uh, very athletic, very explosive, and you can just see that when you watched him play, he's like, dang, if you had him in fantasy, you're like he has so much potential to really go off, but his team not allowing him because his coach isn't the I'm not saying not the smartest, but his coach is kind of hoeing people. So we're gonna put a we're gonna put B. John Robinson at a really good option if you want to pick him top three. Tyreek Hill, draft. If you top one, if you got the first pick, that's not bad. Draft him. You got the second pick, third pick, whatever. Tyreek Hill is he was number one on the NFL top 100 for a reason. I made the mistake last year not drafting Tyreek Hill. I thought I, I think I drafted I drafted Austin Eckler. That didn't work at all for me. That worked. That was awful. I should draft the Tyreek Hill. Because he is absolutely going to get 100 some yards every game. Because he's going to get that long touchdown. He's going to get a touchdown or two every game. Like Tyreek Hill is a menace on the field. So if you have the first overall pick and you think you have a PPR league, half PPR, whatever you got, if you got, especially if you got bonuses on long touchdowns, bro, you need to get Tyreek Hill, bro. If you got the first pick, that is a great, great thing to do. So go for him. Brees Hall, I'm going to say that's a good option. Um, Brees Hall is. You know, Aaron Rodgers being quarterback is going to be much different than Zach Wilson. I mean, you see Brees Hall. He had a pretty good season last year. I think when you have more capable quarterback play, and Aaron Rodgers does not have to look like 2011 Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, so Brees Hall, I think, definitely should have a really good season. And I wouldn't draft the number one or top three. But honestly, he one of those people like, you know, Josh Jacobs, who was the best running back in terms of fantasy football like two years ago. He's one of those people that can have that season. And if you do draft him top three, 
then you low key could be like, oh, okay, I'm a freaking genius. Um, Derrick Henry, I think it's risky. I think Derrick Henry with Lamar Jackson, I mean, he should be, I mean, he's older now. He got a lot of miles on him, you know? Like, if he was prime Derrick Henry, then he'd be easily the first overall pick. But he's older. He, he got Lamar and they run the ball, and, you know, but I don't know. I just feel like, you know, when you have that many miles on you, it just doesn't feel like, I feel like it'd be risky if you just pick Derrick Henry. I think he can definitely, because I remember the game we played him, the Texans played him, and Derrick Henry had like under 100 yards and he didn't play well. And I'm like, yo, if Derrick Henry getting under 100 yards with, facing the Texans who he loved getting 200 routinely on then he he fell off he's a, he fell off a cliff so Lamar better quarterback play should help him out but I think it's pretty risky still if you get him in a number one overall or top three CeeDee Lamb I would put him at draft first uh, and I mean he had a great season last year Dak Prescott that's easily his favorite target that's his only target they have no number two receiver really at all actually I don't think they I'm not even saying really they don't have a number two receiver so he's going to get a lot of of targets like extreme like jake ferguson is is i mean they're tight end he's good but he's not travis kelsey he's not george kittle so he should get 130 catches like he should get a lot of target the target share gonna be insane and he has the best i think he'll have the best receiver target share of any receiver because there's such a drop off on his second receiver it's crazy like tyreek hill he has the home run threat ability but he has jalen waddle I think CD Lamb's actually a better option than Tyreek Hill for the simple fact that he is the only one there. So draft him. If you have the number one, number two pick, yeah, he's a he's a good pick. And then we have the king of them all. We have Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey. So I'm actually gonna put this move out my way. I'm gonna put this like this. Christian McCaffrey is, you know, I don't thing is he, the only problem he he has injury concerns he played well he played all last year played well maybe a different team helps him out a lot and you know he led the league in touchdowns led the league in rushing yards he's a really good catching back so he has everything you want in a fantasy receiver so if you have the number one overall pick that's the safe pick but at the same time if you want to pick cd land number one overall that is not an issue because you're like maybe christian doesn't replicate that maybe he gets injured but cd lamb the only receiver and then Tyreek Hill is a home run threat. So if I have the number one overall pick, those are the three people I'm getting. And if you don't have the number one pick, but you have number two or number three, pick one of those three. After that, I think Robinson and Brees Hall will be really good. I think they can have really good breakout seasons. The four risky ones, they have like either maybe a quarterback thing. I know Jamar Chase is quarterback's injured, so maybe that's the only reason why. Not injured, but he had injury issues. Jonathan Taylor, you know, he had, we'll see how he does. I think he's a good, I think he's more of a good option though. I might, I might change that. I think John Taylor's a good option. I'm going to put John Taylor a good option. But I think those three, I, I think they're risky. And I think, yeah, Amon Ross St. Brown, hell of a player. But I don't think, like, that's, you must you must know he's going to have a Cooper Cup season or something if you think he picked a top three. That's my list. These are the top 10 fantasy options. So pick them how you pick them and pick them in this order and hopefully thrive. But for more fantasy football content like this, make sure to like this video. I can definitely do more if you guys find it helpful, if you guys find it entertaining. Definitely down and do that. And hey, Make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's road to 2,000 subscribers. And I'm going to catch you guys on the next video. Maria. Peace.